Rabbi Breyer walked into our third grade classroom, hung up his long black coat, took off his big black hat, and handed each student a small black booklet entitled The Guide to Blessings. We had one week, he told us, to prepare for the annual Yeshiva of Spring Valley Blessing Bee. My heart leapt. This was just what my mother needed. The Blessing Bee would make her forget all the troubles of our home. To have a son who's a Talmud Chacham, a wise student, that was the ultimate. Her brother was a respected rabbi, and if her husband couldn't be one, well, maybe her son could be. The Guide to Blessings was a 70-page long listing of hundreds of different foods, soups, breads, fish, desserts. I flipped through it, slowly realizing the size of the challenge that lay ahead. Falafel? Herring? Eggplant parmesan? I had my work cut out for me. Friday afternoons, the yeshiva closed early so that we could all rush home to help our parents prepare for Shabbos, the Sabbath. Rabbi Breyer told us that the sages tell us that the Torah tells us that the preparation for Shabbos is equal to the importance of Shabbos itself. Most of my preparations involved searching the house for kosher wine and pouring it down the toilet. It was a thankless job, I admitted to nobody. My father's frustrated rage at not having his Manischewitz Concord grape was fearsome, but it was far better than his drunken rage if he did have it. I'd search the pantry, I'd search the garage, I'd search my father's closet, but I was only eight years old, and there was always a bottle of Kedem hiding somewhere I just hadn't thought to check. That night, my father, drunk on a bottle of Bless Chablis that got away, grabbed my older brother by his shirt collar and dragged him away from the Shabbos table. He dragged him all the way down the stairs to our bedroom in the basement and slammed the door shut. Even the silverware jumped. Who wants the lat's matzo ball, my mother asked. I made extra. When my brother returned to the table, his nose was bleeding. My mother brought him a can of frozen orange juice to hold against the back of his neck, which was supposed to somehow stop the bleeding. Rabbi Breyer taught us that it is prohibited to defrost orange juice on Shabbos because changing food from solid to liquid is considered cooking, and cooking is considered working, and even God refrained from working on Shabbos. There are 39 different categories of work that are prohibited on Shabbos. That's also why you're not allowed to switch on lights on Shabbos. The electricity causes the filament to glow, which is considered burning, which is considered working. Category number two. My father came back to the table and drunkenly sang a few Shabbos songs, fudging the words and banging heavily on the table with his fist. I sat hunched over, absentmindedly drawing circles on the condensation that had formed on the silver water pitcher. My father slapped my hand. Shabbos, he shouted, writing category number five. Eventually, he stumbled off to his bedroom and fell asleep, snoring loudly. We sat in the dining room and picked glumly at our food. The following Monday morning, as we all sat studying from our blessing books, there was a knock on Rabbi Breyer's classroom door, and Rabbi Greenbaum, the yeshiva principal, solemnly entered. We all rose. The two rabbis conferred quietly for a moment before signaling us all to be seated. After a few thoughtful strokes of his long black beard, Rabbi Greenbaum sighed deeply and informed us that the night before, our classmate of Rami Grunenbaum's father had suffered a heart attack and died. Some kids have all the luck. Blessed is the one true judge, said Rabbi Breyer, nodding his head. Blessed is the one true judge, we all answered, nodding our heads. I wondered what Mr. Grunenbaum might have done to deserve death. Did he bow down to idols? Did he walk four steps without his yarmulke on? Whatever it was, it must have been pretty bad. As Rabbi Greenbaum turned to leave, he paused, and with a stern shake of his finger, reminded us all that the sages tell us, that the Torah tells us, that until the age of thirteen, all of a boy's sins are ascribed to his father. I turned to look at Avrami's empty chair, Avrami was a chubby kid with heavy orthodontia and foul breath, but a sudden respect for him grew inside me. I wondered what he might have done to cause his father's death. Whatever it was, it must have been pretty bad. 
scowling fiercely, Rabbi Greenbaum advised each and every one of us to pray to Hashem, the Holy One, blessed be He, for forgiveness, so that He wouldn't kill our fathers too. My heart leapt. Blessed is Hashem, he said. Blessed is Hashem, we answered. Blessed is Hashem was right. All of a sudden, I had two ways I could save my family. I could win the blessing be for my mother, or I could sin so much, Hashem would have to kill my father. Courageous Avrami Grunenbaum. Maybe one Shabbos night he had switched on a light. Maybe he drank milk after eating meat. Maybe he touched himself. That night, just before bed, I ate a drumstick, washed it down with some milk, touched myself, and flicked the bedroom light on and off. Break those lights and I'll break your hands, my father shouted. It was going to be a busy week. The blessing bee worked the same way as a spelling bee. There are six basic blessings on food. Hamotzi, the blessing for bread. Mizonos, the blessing for wheat. Hagefen, the blessing for wine or grape juice. Ha'etz, the blessing for things that grow from trees. Hadama, the blessing for things that grow from the earth. And Shehakol, the blessing for everything else. Bagel, Hamotzi. Oatmeal, Mizonos. Gefilte fish, Shehakol, the blessing for everything else. But that was the easy part. Things became much more complicated when you started combining foods. Some foods are superior to other foods, and in combination with subordinate foods, the superior food gets the blessing. To make matters worse, some blessings are superior to other blessings, and you had to know which blessing to recite first. This is where they separated the men from the goys. Spaghetti and meatballs, Mizonos, the wheat blessing, then Shahako, the everything else blessing. Cereal with milk, Shahako for the milk, then Mizonos for the wheat and the cereal. Twix, the chocolate candy with the cookie crunch? Trick question. Twix isn't kosher. I spent the next week sinning and blessing and blessing and sinning, alternately praising God and then defying Him, as much as one eight-year-old possibly could. Monday morning, I stuffed myself. I had a bowl of fruity pebbles, Mizonos, a slice of toast, Hamotzi, a glass of juice, Shehakol, half an apple, Ha'etz, and a couple of old french fries I found at the bottom of the fridge, Hadama. One meal, five blessings. Tuesday, I touched myself. I also partook of bread without first ceremoniously washing my hands. And that evening, before going to sleep, I sat on the edge of my bed and carefully recited (laughs) and ass a dozen times each. My father banged angrily on my bedroom door. Lights out, he barked. I smiled. For you and me both, pal. Wednesday, I stole five dollars from my mother and didn't recite any blessings at all on the bag full of candy that I bought with it. A Charleston shoe, which is trafe to begin with, and a chunky, which would have been a shahakol if I weren't trying to kill my father. A chunky with raisins? Shahakol, then haates. Thursday, I didn't wear titsis. Rabbi Breyer noticed that the strings weren't dangling from my sides and grabbed me by the ear and pulled me to the front of the class. Speak to the children of Israel, he quoted loudly from the Torah as he spanked me hard on my bottom, and tell them to make titsis on the corners of their garments. That afternoon, after not respecting my elders by taking out the garbage like my mother had told me to, I touched myself and silently begged God to just this once credit those sins to Rabbi Breyer's account. Later, I defiled a prayer book by carrying it into the bathroom. The blessing bee was the following morning, and I could barely sleep. Lentil soup, Mizonos. Potato knish, Hadama. Root beer, is it a root? Is it a beer? (laughs) Ass, bitch. I tossed and turned, I blessed and cursed, and finally I fell into an uncomfortable sleep. After a week at home, Avrami Grunenbaum conveniently returned to school just in time for the blessing bee. It was all I could do to not lean over and ask him how he did it. Psst, Avrami, tell me. Was it lobster? Did you eat lobster? Rabbi Breyer told us that the sages tell us that the Torah tells us that when Abraham died, 
Hashem comforted Isaac. We learn from this that it is a tremendous mitzvah, or good deed, to comfort the bereaved. Rabbi Breyer instructed us all to line up at Avrami's desk to shake his hand and recite the traditional mourner's consolation. May Hashem comfort you among the mourners of Zion. Being just eight years old, I wasn't entirely familiar with Hashem's system, but it occurred to me that, along with all my sins, my father might also be getting all my mitzvahs. I wasn't taking any chances. Soon it was my turn in line. How's it going? I said to Avrami. Rabbi Breyer pinched me. How? I screamed. Schmendrick, he grumbled. After the last boy had asked Hashem to comfort Avrami among the mourners of Zion, Rabbi Breyer smacked his desk loudly. The blessing bee began. We lined up at the back of the classroom, nervously pulling on our tzitzis and twirling our payas. The rules were simple. Name the correct blessing and remain standing for the next round. Name the wrong blessing and you take your seat. Last year's winner, Yukasil Zalman Yehuda Schneck, stood beside me. He leaned calmly against the wall, mindlessly picking his nose. Auslander, shalom, called out Rabbi Breyer. I stepped forward. Apple, he shouted. Apple, I called out. Ha'etz, the blessing for food from trees. Correct, Rabbi Breyer said. The blessing bee usually started off pretty easy. David Borgen got tuna, Shahako, the everything else blessing, Ari Mashinsky got matzah, hamotzi, the blessing for bread, and Avi Tuckman got stuck with kugel, which he thought was hadama, food from the earth, but was really Mizonos, the blessing on wheat. Three other kids got taken out by oatmeal. Borscht with sour cream claimed two others, and by the end of the first round, almost a third of the students were already back in their seats. Round two. Auslander, shalom, called Rabbi Breyer. I stepped forward. Mushroom barley soup, he shouted. Mushroom barley soup, mushroom barley soup. Damn, I knew I should have studied the chapter on soups more. I'd wasted half the week on entrees. Was it Adama on the mushrooms, which came from the earth? Or was it Mizonos on the barley? Maybe it was Shahakol, the everything else blessing on the soup. Mushroom barley soup, I called out. Mizonos. Rabbi Breyer tugged on his beard, his eyes narrowing into angry little slits. And, uh, Shahakol, I added. Rabbi Breyer triumphantly smacked his desk, signaling that I was correct. Apple Strudel took out David Borgen, Yoel Levine, and Shlomo Pomerantz. My friend Mutti Greenberg got stuck with cheesecake, and I could tell just by the expression on his face that he had absolutely no idea. He wisely offered two answers, one for thin crust and one for thick, and somehow managed to stay alive. It was hard to believe this was only round two. Avrami stepped forward. I smiled at Mutti. Avrami may have killed his father, but he wasn't very bright, and he never did well at these things. He was lucky to even be in the second round at all. Bagel, shouted Rabbi Breyer. Bagel? I looked at Mutti in disbelief. Was he kidding? Bagel? Bagel, called out Avrami. Hamotzi. This was bull****. Correct, shouted Rabbi Breyer. Very good. Ephraim Greenblatt, Avrami Epstein, and Yoel Frankel all got out on chalant with barley and large pieces of meat, while chopped liver on challah with a slice of lettuce and a bit of olive took out four more, including Mati. And then there were three. It was just Yukasiel Zalman Yehuda Schneck, Avrami Grunenbaum, and me. Round three began. Auslander, shalom, called out Rabbi Breyer. I stepped forward. Ice cream, shouted Rabbi Breyer. In a cone. Ice cream in a cone, ice cream in a cone. I knew ice cream, but why would he add the cone? Was there something different if it was in a cone? What was an ice cream cone made of anyway? Was it cake? Was it a wafer? Ice cream in a cone, Rabbi Breyer shouted. Is the ice cream subordinate to the cone, or is it the cone subordinate to the ice cream? If it's a sugar cone, maybe you really desire the cone. Ice cream in a cone, Rabbi Breyer shouted again. I had no choice. Ice cream in a cone, I called out. No blessing. Everyone in the classroom turned to face me. Looking back on the whole episode, 
Rabbi Breyer had really left me no choice. No blessing, said Rabbi Breyer. Why no blessing? Because, I explained, nervously twirling my tzitzis. Because. Because the room smells like duty. There was a long silence. Mati giggled, and others followed. Rabbi Breyer slowly rose to his feet, his thick fists pushing themselves into the desktop. It may have been a loophole, but technically speaking, I was correct. Rabbi Breyer himself had told us that our sages tell us that the Torah tells us that there are three situations in which one is absolutely prohibited from reciting a blessing. One, while facing a male over the age of nine years old whose genitals are showing. Two, while facing a female over the age of three years old whose genitals are showing. And three, in the presence of feces. Frankly, given the other two options, I think I chose the least offensive answer. For a big man, Rabbi Breyer moved pretty quickly. It's true, I said as he barreled toward me. The Torah says that he grabbed me roughly by my arm, lifting me clear off the ground, and dragged me towards the door, shouting angrily in Yiddish the whole time. But it smells like duty, I yelled. The room smells like duty. Wait, uh, there's a naked girl in the room. There's a naked girl. The door slammed shut behind me. I stood in the hallway and rubbed my bruised arm. I began to cry. The blessing bee was lost. I was not a great rabbi. And my father was still not dead. I tiptoed toward the classroom door and listened closely. Two minutes later, Yukasiel Zalman Yehuda Schneck fell victim to matzah brai with maple syrup, and the last man standing was of Rummy Grunenbaum. Apples, called out Rabbi Breyer. Apples, of Rummy answered. Ha'etz. Mazel tov, called out Rabbi Breyer. Mazel tov. Total bull. That night, we had the traditional Friday night gefilte fish, shahakol, with a little slice of carrot, hadama. My father was drunk again, singing Shabbos songs, fudging the words, and banging heavily on the table with his fist. My mother went into the kitchen and brought out the soup. When my brother said he didn't want any, my father slapped him, pushed him over backward onto the floor, and poured the hot chicken soup onto his face. My mother took my brother into the bathroom and sat with him on the edge of the bathtub, pressing a cold washcloth against his cheeks, and I went back to the dining room to wipe the chicken soup off the floor. Chicken soup is a shahakol, even if it is cooked with vegetables, since chicken is the dominant taste in the soup. Rabbi Breyer told us that the sages tell us that the Torah tells us that the Holy One blessed be he, sent the Egyptians ten plagues in order to teach us that he gives people many chances to repent. And only then, if they still continue to sin, does he punish them with death. I went downstairs to my bedroom, took four steps without my yarmulke on, touched myself, flicked the lights off and on, and fell asleep.